Good afternoon, Carmel High School. I'm Tara Lacey alongside Stephen Abshire, bringing you today's first senior show. It's great to be back on CHTV together alongside Shauna Jackson, who will bring us a sports segment later on. Not only is it great to be back, but it is even more special with the renovation that was done over the summer. Yes, and as seniors, it really is great to see the changes that have come to the program over the past four years. Enough about CHTV, though. Let's take a look into our main stories about Carmel. The biggest story that's been circulating the halls of CHS has been the results of the last fall's PSAT that were recently announced. That's right, Stephen. The 2017-2018 National Merit Finalist list has been announced for the graduating class of 2018. 52 seniors were named National Merit Finalists. The Indy Star states that the number of semi-finalists by state has not been released for 2018, but in the 2016 report, Alaska, Delaware, District of Columbia, North and South Dakota, Vermont, and Wyoming each had fewer than 52 semi-finalists. Even out of the state of Indiana, Carmel High School has seen 16% of the state's total of 322 semi-finalists. The school with the second highest total of semi-finalists was Park Tudor with 11. Although this success is rare in schools around the country, Carmel has seen more than 45 semi-finalists in all of the past five years, including 52 ag again last year. Carmel's number of students have also placed them in the top 10 schools in the United States. The semifinalists will compete for more than 7,000 scholarships worth more than $32 million. Congratulations to the 52 semifinalists here at CHS. The success of students here at Carmel is incredible and I look forward to seeing how many finalists we will end up with when the results have been announced. Yeah, I agree, Stephen. It's very cool to see the successes of students in our grade. Another story that could have an impact on CHS students, but has certainly been a top headline over the past months, has been the extreme weather all across the country. Of course, Stephen. And as we begin to transition more into fall, what do you think can be expected? Well, for us here in Indiana, hopefully the winter weather will stay farther in the future. From the current forecast, the rest of the year will likely be slightly above average with average precipitation. Of course, these predictions are exactly that, predictions. Much of this could change depending on the formation of a possible La Nina in the Pacific and what the rest of the Atlantic hurricane season has to offer. In the event of a La Nina, we could see temperatures that would be below average and an increase in precipitation. La Nina or not, the threat of more hurricanes and tropical storms to the United States is far from over. Even though Indiana is not directly impacted by the winds and storm surge accompanied with these storms, the remnants can still bring rain and flooding. Just recently, the leftovers of the Category 1 Hurricane Nate that struck the Gulf Coast dropped more than three inches of rain in Indianapolis. This season has been one of the most active since the infamous 2005 season that brought Hurricanes Katrina and Wilma. And this year's Harvey, Irma, and Maria will join these two as some of the strongest and costliest to hit the United States. As the fall moves on for Indiana and the rest of the country, CHTV will continue to cover what to expect here in Carmel. Thanks, Stephen. One thing I've loved about Carmel this year has been the home football games. I look forward to them on Friday nights as well. But as the season goes on, students are not the only ones watching the team. In the past, Carmel High School has been home to numerous Division I athletes, such as last year's Kurt Raftal and Jalen Walker, whose athletic ability caught the eyes of recruiters and fans alike. That's right, Stephen. And as this season moves into the playoffs, Jackson and Sean took a look at recruiting here in Indiana. Despite not being the hotbed for football that it's known for in basketball, Indiana produces plenty of football talent when looking at recruiting. According to 24-7 Sports, the state of Indiana averages about three to four four-star ranked recruits every year since 2015 and typically has about 40-plus recruits ranked within the state. Some of these players have become national standouts, such as class of 2016 Ben Davis running back Chris Evans, who starts for Michigan. Also class of 2017 Brownsburg quarterback Hunter Johnson was a five-star recruit and ranked 30th overall in the country, who is now at Clemson. Carmel is certainly involved in the recruiting mania as they produce college talent year in and year out. Last year's senior class had 11 players go on to play Division I football. Some of the most notable Carmel football products in recent years have been Austin Roberts to UCLA, Isaac James to Indiana, Noah Burks to Wisconsin, and Kurt Raftal to Nebraska. To find out more about offers, rankings, and everything in the recruiting process, Jackson and I sat down with Carmel defensive end Bo Robbins and national recruiting director for 24-7 Sports, Steve Wilthon. Let's take a look. Um, it really kind of started at spring of freshman year. Kind of had a pretty good freshman year um, just as far as the season went and kind of started to get some buzz with recruiting going on. And then I kind of got my first varsity start sophomore year that first game, and I kind of showed that. I kind of lived up to the hype and played pretty well and continued to have a pretty good sophomore year and then the recruiting process just kind of continued from there. 
I'm the director of recruiting at 24-7 Sports, so I oversee our recruiting coverage across the country, which starts with prospects and where they're going to go to school and, and what schools they're considering, and also what the blue bloods and, and high-profile schools, what prospects they're looking at, and then also I have a hand in our rankings. So for us, we have five stars, four stars, three star prospects, and, and two star prospects. Five stars, we have 32 five stars each recruiting cycle. So that represents, there's 32 first round picks in the NFL draft. A four star generally means that we think you're going to be an NFL prospect. A three year or a three star means that we think you're a two year starter at a power five program with a chance to be an all conference player. And two star thinks we think that you're an FBS Division One recruit. Well, I think you're looking at athletic traits. Uh, you're looking at their size, speed, athleticism. Uh, you like to see verified testing numbers from 40 yard dash to agilities to, to a vertical leap. You like to see multiple sport athletes. You like to see production on Friday nights, particularly in the state tournament in big games. I think that's where you start. I'm a four star. I'm ranked second in Indiana, and I think I'm like 180th in the country, something like that, somewhere around there. So after semi-state last year, I had, we played Penn, and I had like one of my best games. Um, I had like four sacks, and then the day after, IU called me, and they offered me. And so that was when it was like, all right, like this is really happening. Like I'm actually going to be able to play college football somewhere and then so kind of that happened and then um, over the next like few months or so coaches would come in during like APC and get a meet with them and stuff like that and then kind of during the spring is really when it kind of started to take off. Um, I went and visited a couple schools and that's when I really picked up a whole bunch of offers. I have 10 offers right now. Um, Michigan State, Louisville, Northwestern, IU, Purdue, uh, and then like a couple other Big Ten and Mac schools. So we have a lot of Carmel guys in the, in the database right now, some guys that haven't been offered yet that I think have a chance to be prospects down the road. Bo Robbins is the highest ranked prospect in our database right now. He's in our top 247. I believe he's our number two ranked player in the state of Indiana in the 2019 class right now. But rankings are fluid and as we learn more about prospects uh, and other young men are going to pop up and other guys aren't going to be as good as we thought they were as we continue to gather information. But what's well, the most important thing to have a strong huddle tape, and I'm talking game tape, you know, because the best college programs are the ones watching full game film to make sure kids doing all the right things over the course of a 48-minute football game. Um, you know, kids are taking visits before they're taking off, getting offers sometimes, you know, and college coaches are on the road a couple times a year. Uh, going into high schools and adding kids to lists and uh, college staffs have an off-field recruiting department that's putting together lists and names too and they're inviting kids to campus and they're offering kids. And uh, last spring I visited Ohio State, Notre Dame and Northwestern and then those all went pretty well. I went back up to Ohio State over the summer for a camp I got to do that and that was a lot of fun. Well, Carmel's as fine a high school football program as you're going to find in the country from a coaching standpoint to assistant coaches, to facilities, to just support uh, Carmel's, Carmel's second to none for the most part in, in that regard. And every year there's guys that go on to play major college football, mid-major college football. I think Carmel goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about anybody, and particularly in Indiana, they're you know, in that elite group with just a couple other schools. I mean, just kind of like playing in the mick and playing at like the level that Carmel plays at definitely shows that like, well, if you can play well at this level, which is like the highest level in high school football, then you're definitely going to be able to go play Division I somewhere. Well, Sean, when looking at this year's senior class, it seems to be one of the deepest classes in recent history. I want to know who would you consider the top five players in the state based on the following attributes, talent, production, and potential. Well, Jackson, starting with number five, I have to go with the big offensive lineman, Emil Akeyer. He's just an absolute tank with his huge frame that allows for a run game to open up with ease, which is exactly why he has an offer from Alabama right now. To start my top five, at number five, I have the Warren Central safety, Julius Brents, who's an Iowa commit. I like Brents' ability to play both ways in terms of playing coverage and going up to stop the run. 
The hard-hitting safety has good size at 6'2", and has the ability to really cover the entire field. Moving on to number four is Johnny Adams. He's not ranked as high on many recruiting sites, but you just have to watch him firsthand to know that he is a special player. His acceleration and ability to redirect himself mid-run opens up so many opportunities for an offense, making him a versatile weapon in any program, which is exactly why he's averaging over 10 yards per carry right now. For my number four spot, I have Marquis Stepp, the Cathedral running back and Notre Dame commit. Stepp has been a little bit of a forgotten commodity around the state because as a sophomore he ran for 1,300 yards, but his junior year he was injured for most of the season. But he's putting together a great season this senior year and has game-changing talent that will be utilized well in college. At number three, of course, I have Cameron McCron. He sprung onto the senior year just stringing together a great season and collecting accolades and a commitment to Michigan. You know Coach Har Harbaugh has a talent for finding special players for his program, and I would definitely agree with him on this list. I would put him higher on my list, but my top two are just real special talents with playing on a different level. I love to have the Ben Davis quarterback, Reese Taylor at number one, due to his extreme athleticism and explosiveness, but I have him at number three. He makes plays in the air and on his feet and is currently the favorite to win Mr. Football this year. As a junior, he threw for 26 touchdowns and 2,730 yards, as well as rushing for 23 touchdowns and 961 yards, not to mention his 40-yard dash time of a 4-3-6. Uh, the only knock on Taylor would be his size. At under 6 foot, the Indiana recruit will be challenged at the quarterback position. I couldn't have this list without my number two, Marquis Stepp. He plays with such an aggressive mindset, and for an all-purpose back, you can see that on every single run. He runs downhill and is aggressive and will never run out of bounds or just give up on a play. And you combine that mindset with some blinding speed and a breakaway ability, you just create a scoring machine. That's definitely going to be adding to Notre Dame's program in the future. I have Cameron McGrone, the Lawrence Central linebacker and fellow Michigan commit at number two, for his great projectable frame at 6'1 and great strength. McGrone's been a little bit of a late bloomer in the recruiting process, but is putting together a really special senior season, including a game-winning force fumble against Center Grove. McGrone's ascension to top talent level has allowed the Lawrence Central program to be revitalized as they're ranked in the top three in the state for the first time in years. I like McGrone's ta elite talent as well as his ability to be a true team leader. And finally, my number one, the Ben Davis athletic stud at quarterback, Reese Taylor. Some people have Taylor ranked as low as number seven on most sites, but Taylor's just one of those players that you need to watch him play in person to see his greatness. He ha plays the game at a different speed, and it seems like everything is happening at once, but he's still able to keep his eyes downfield. If you combine Russell Wilson's pocket escapability and a precision passer, you create a Reese Taylor. And then you take into account his overall athleticism and ability to switch to defensive back whenever desired. He's just a spark plug who you can take over a game whenever he wants, like no one else in the state. I love Reese Taylor, but I put the Cathedral offensive lineman and Michigan recruit, recruit, recruit Emile Kayer at number one due to his great size at 6'2", 322 uh, pounds, an excellent play. It's hard to be noticed as an offensive lineman, but his size and ability speaks for itself. Oftentimes you see great linemen with great size but undeveloped fundamentals. That's not the case at all for a Kayer. The four-year starter has been an impact player since his first day on the field and his ability to block and allow an absurd amount of time for his quarterback as well as open holes for the running game is just unmatched. Just about nobody gets past Emil. He also has great pro potential as his father played in the NFL. Well, Jackson, we had four players in common, but a little variance among the rankings. Regardless of personal rankings, 24-7 Sports currently has a Kayer at number one, Macron at number two, Step at number three, North Central's cornerback DJ Johnson at number four, and Brents at number five. Obviously, Indiana is rich with football talent, but much of the strongest talent can be found here at Carmel High School. Players like jo Jake McDonald, Joey Schmidt, Nate Fry and Kamari Hunt are all unique talents with college interest. McDonald, the team captain and senior quarterback, currently holds an offer from Dayton, has unofficially visited Ball State, and is talking with Yale, among others. Hunt currently holds an offer from Central Michigan, but expect Hunt's stock to rise a lot going into the spring after a stellar junior season where he is currently leading the team in offense and touchdowns and has assumed the starting running back position. On the defensive side of the ball, Nate Fry is an aggressive safety with a nose for the ball and a motor that results in him getting involved in a large amount of team tackles. Fry has received Division I interest and has taken an unofficial visit to Michigan State. Schmidt is ranked 15th in the state in the junior class and has one offer at this point from Bowling Green. 
Schmidt has taken unofficial visits to Indiana, Michigan State, and Iowa thus far. Schmidt's recent play should propel him to more offers in the near future. Well, that's all we have for today's report. Now back to you, Tara. Thanks, Sean. One of the biggest local football stories from this past week was the Jersey retirement of Peyton Manning. That's right, Tara, and it was rightfully so. Peyton had one of the greatest careers of any football player, and he had such a big impact on the city. It was nice to see him being honored. It was amazing to see all the cult spirit that took place last Sunday. Here at Carmel, our own school spirit can be seen at almost every home game thanks to the club Big Game. That's right, Tara, and CHTV sat down with some of the main leaders of Big Game to learn more. Big Game's been a thing, like, for so many years, Pearson, who's probably in his 30s now, he was in big game when he was at Carmel. Um, and it's always been a thing. It's always been like the student section at Carmel, it's been called that. Since in middle school, um, Matthew, Griffin, and I went to all the games, like basketball games, girls basketball, um, anything we could. And in middle school, I was the Clay Trojan. And so I was always like the hype guy of uh, Clay and then from Clay um, as soon as we got to the high school um, Big Game was a senior only club and so then we made our own thing with Fresh Game and so we've always wanted it but freshman year we couldn't and so then after that then they changed it anyone can join Big Game it's it used to be like a you pay to be in but now it's, we kind of made it a thing where it's not a you're in it you're not in it but Greyhound Nation as a whole should go to the game and so it's not a um, dividing factor between who's in big game and who's just going to the game so it's kind of just the student section. Um, if you clean up after games or if you reach out to someone in big game about helping out with the tailgate or being involved in a game that kind of thing you can be part of big game. Um, we attend all the sporting events we can and tailgate before and get as many people there as possible. Um, as a member of Big Game, I'm in charge of all promotional things, so flyers, banners, posters for the game, anything to kind of get people to come out. Um, I don't know, I think I'm one of the top hype people, I mean obviously being hype from birth. Uh, being hype is just like Mozart playing the piano, and I feel like I do that very well in the student section, and that's my main goal. It's just really all about getting involved with school spirit and becoming part of the school. Well, like, they just give me energy, like, and especially, like, the other student body when they're playing the sports, like, if they get a good goal or if they play well, that just helps me get even more excited and hyped. This year, in years past, it's always been the big sports, so football, basketball, those were the main two, and so this year we've been trying to spread it out and make all of the games exciting, so, um, We've really hit hard on soccer this year, football as always. Um, we're going to try and get some people to volleyball. Uh, and then in the winter sports, we're going to try and get more people to go as well. Favorite memory? Honestly, starting the drum. We started that last year. Um, I took a drum from my basement and it was kind of, the administration was kind of iffy about it because they didn't know what it was and I was like, just let me try it and now it's like this huge thing and so I think that's really cool. Soccer games are like where like the true fans come out and like the real big game people and the, they like still bring the hype and everything. It's really fun at the soccer games. My goal is just to make every game the best game um, and make all of Carmel like super excited to go to these games and um, win the banner. Well that about wraps up today's show. If you'd like to keep up with us, follow us on Twitter using the handle at CHTV and Instagram at Carmel TV. Thanks for watching the first senior show here on CHTV. We hope to be back later in the second quarter with more Carmel updates.